and gents, before we get to the actual construction in today's video, I'm going to go over a couple items with you in regards to the financials of the Freedom Factory. All right, really quick, we're going to go over a couple different things. We're going to go over the expenses in regard to the pipe repair, the kitchen, and the roofs on the actual concessions area. After that, we're gonna cover the track repair versus repaving the entire track. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about the overall financial state of the Freedom Factory bank account as it sits. And then we're gonna get into the actual content of the video. So just, if you wanna skip forward, you can. Otherwise, we're gonna go over these three things real quick. To start with the pipe repair, a lot of you guys commented to put a liner in it. Well, here's the deal with the liner. We got a quote. It's 175 feet, you have to do the pipe end to end. So basically what they do is they, like taking your sock off, they roll a liner into the pipe all the way across it. It seals it, it's actually warranted for 50 years, but it's $20,000. That includes labor, everything installed. To dig it up and actually just change out the pipe, which we've already dug up the asphalt and stuff. We get the pipe for about two grand and repair everything for I'd say, five grand total with the concrete collars that we're gonna have to pour. So I'm thinking that's the better route to go. But if we get in there and find out that the pipe does have more issues, then the liner would be the next option. But again, that's $20,000. So that's, that's a serious chunk of change. Like that's no joke, but it sounds like a joke in comparison to some of the items that I'm gonna talk about here next. We decided to redo all of the roofing over the merch room, the two bars, the electrical room, all down that one side. Right now it's just that thin aluminum that's already failed. So they have this really, really nice composite double-sided aluminum. It's basically like probably a couple inches thick for the roofing. And we had a guy come out, show us a sample. And then he did a cover over the water system that you guys saw us install a couple months ago. And it came out really good. He did a really good job on it. That's about a $30,000 job. And I went ahead and signed off on that because I know we need roofs. And right now they're not even insulated roofs. And I wanted to put some insulated roofs on. It's just gonna make a world of a difference. And we will have no leaks, which the leaks are what's leading to the other problems with the wood rotting at the bottom of the walls. So I'm just taking care of the roofs. We're gonna be done with it, but that's 30 grand out of our bank account. Before we go on to the track repair stuff, the bleachers, a lot of you guys picked up on, you can hear the bleachers being repaired in the background. That is a huge job. And I've mentioned it one time before, but that was a full aluminum job now. And there's details coming on that, but I'm kind of keeping a, a surprise. You guys can kind of take a peek in the background if you get a chance. But that project, over $200,000. So just keep these numbers in the back of your head. And then when we get to this third section, we're gonna talk about kind of how we're paying for all this. So next up, let's go over to track repair versus repave. So I filmed another intro with RG yesterday, but it wasn't detailed enough. That's why I'm filming this one now. Basically, we sat down and looked at what the cost of doing the entire track is. Now I know there's a million financial advisors on Instagram that seem to be able to comment whatever they want saying that I should just do the whole track. Well, here's the reality of it, folks. There's no one else stepping up to repair an abandoned racetrack. So it's up to me to make the decision whether or not we're gonna repave the whole thing. So let me start with this. I'm pretty sure that I have put in your guys' head that the entire track is in disrepair. Maybe that's because I only show a lot of the bad stuff. The track is actually not in horrible shape. A lot of it is good. The straightaways have some really good spots, but there's obviously some really bad spots like turn three and four. So keep in mind, 85% of the rest of the track is in good shape. It's in great shape. It's better than a lot of tracks that are currently being raced on. There's just the really bad spots, okay? By removing those spots and using a paver that can just fill in those holes, there, it's not real complicated. It's very easy, doesn't take a lot of asphalt, doesn't take a lot of labor, and it's done. If you completely mill the surface of a track away, you have to re-engineer the entire slope, right? You don't have anything to base your points off of anymore. It's a massive operation. It's an engineered operation and it's a huge process to get that going. So when RG and I sat down, it's probably more of a $1 million plus dollar operation than a $600,000 deal. And that million dollar number is with RG supplying all of the labor and equipment himself, which that by itself is a huge commitment from just him. So, so here's what we're gonna do we're not gonna tear out our entire track. Not only does it not make sense financially, it also just doesn't seem like something we need to do. Now I know you see the bad stuff and it makes you think it would be nice to have it all fresh, but 
there's a lot of good track left. And as you've seen, we've been getting by just fine with what we have. So doing the entire repairs right now, we're thinking it's gonna be about fifty to seventy thousand dollars to fix up what we're doing right now, a lot less than a million dollars. So now that you know what everything costs, let's circle back to how we're gonna pay for it. This has been something I've had to uh, come to terms with this year and you guys will have to remember is that the Freedom Factory is its own business. The YouTube channel is also its own business. So you kind of have to think about them separately even though they all come back to one home. Basically at the beginning of the year, we had some sponsor money in the bank. I spent that money on doing the first round of renditions as well as some of my personal money, which after the Freedom 500, I was able to pay back the money that I basically lent to the Freedom Factory. Then we kind of rode with a really low bank balance all the way to Burnout Rivals where we made a little bit of money and then Lay Mullets where we made some good money. But with these repairs, we're gonna be spending that money up really quick. In fact, most of it I've already spent before the end of the year. So the track doesn't look like it's making much money on paper in 2020. Now this is something that you guys need to understand is that I didn't buy the track thinking I was gonna make a whole bunch of money off of it the first year, even the first five years. That being said, there's a good chance that I'll be investing my personal money or money from the other business into the Freedom Factory to complete our task of getting it open this next year, which is completely fine. But in the last video, I mentioned how we could come out with this Freedom Construction shirt. If you guys buy it, we're also gonna include a glass jar of, of actual track surface from the Freedom Factory repairs, as well as we've designed a really cool Freedom Factory. It's about a postcard sized piece of paper that I'll be signing each one individually. And it says, you are now an owner of Freedom Factory actual track surface. Kind of certifies it as a real deal. And the shirt is really cool. So came up with a little bundle deal and pretty much everyone in the comments was saying, we gotta do it. And that's gonna be available very soon, probably next week. But I need you guys to understand too that I'm not putting this on you guys to make this happen. I don't want anyone to think that without you guys buying these shirts, this stuff isn't gonna get done. I'm not trying to convince anybody that we're out of money by any means. We literally just bought a motorhome for the channel so that we can haul the race cars out to races all across the country. You guys know we sold Monica. We're by no means in a position where if you guys don't help us, the whole system's gonna crumble. I would hopefully never drive us into that position. And I just wanna be completely straightforward and let you guys know off the bat that these shirts are just a fun project. This will not make or break us. People tell us to set up a GoFundMe or a Patreon. We're in no position to set one of those up and ask you guys for your money without anything in return. I think the t-shirt with a piece of the track history and a certifiable letter that's signed by us is a lot cooler trade that we can make where you guys help us and you also get something to take home. But I just don't want anyone to be tricked into thinking that we're absolutely relying on that. We're gonna finish this project that we started no matter what. And I know I'll probably lose some of the potential shirt sales by saying this, but you guys watching the videos is enough for us. If you wanna go above and beyond and purchase our merchandise and get a piece of the Freedom Factory history, that's amazing. We'd love to make that deal with you. So we are making it happen. The shirt designs are done. I got plenty of track that we've already torn out, which you'll see in today's video. And we're just gathering everything together and we'll have it available to you in a couple of days. But I just had to get on here and explain a couple of these things so we're all on the same page. Because these are huge repairs and this is an awesome opportunity for us to get some help from you guys. We got some amazing things going with the Freedom Factory and I can't wait for y'all to be a part of it. Only a couple more months and this place will be opened up. I promise it's gonna be amazing. I can't wait to have you guys all out, but that's enough talking. Let's get to the video. Hell yeah, brother. You're on the Please Me Fallen YouTube channel. RG, you know this thing's been staring at me for weeks. The mill? Yes. I was teasing you. Staring at me, ready to rip. Guys, we got a brand new cat mill here. If you remember the mill from several, several months ago, what is it now? Like eight months when we did the first milling. Maybe a little longer. That was terrifying back then. But now I'm excited. So guys, we're about to hit the bank in this thing, perhaps. Will it go on the bank is the question. We're gonna find out, but I need you to be on this side. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna counterbalance to the best of my abilities, but uh, this is a huge machine and we're taking it out on the, the bank because we have to do that big hole in turn three. So we're gonna fire her up, drive her out there and see what it does, see what it looks like. Such a unit. 
Now, can we swing this out to one side? Maybe that'll help. Yeah, we can. Then that'll help counterbalance our weight. If you want to, if you want to go with that. <laughs> then the Millings will be at the top of the track. <laughs> oh, what a unit! Can we rev it up? No. <laughs> no, it has to warm up. Hell yeah! A lot of buttons. Don't touch that. Alright, we need water and fuel. We can't touch anything. No! Stop it! <laughs> it's so exciting! What a unit. See how it rises up? This thing is so sick. Hydraulic T-top on this one. That right there is impressive to me. We got our well over there. We're gonna, gonna put some water in this thing. Use it to lubricate the mill head. So we're gonna put some water in it. Then we're gonna top it off with some diesel. Oh, she's a ripper. <laughs> Fire me up, dude, what a unit. So these things cost about $800,000. $800,000 and they lease out for like $4,500 a day. And uh, you know, RG graciously bringing it out here for us for no cost, so that's huge guys. Plus his time, it's probably worth a lot more than that. So you just, yeah. I just remember that. Get nice and close. What an absolute unit, dude. It's actually pretty sporty. There you go. Stick that in the hole. Ready? Using a normal hose versus two inch hose is just such a game changer. But we'll get this baby filled up and we'll get some diesel. It's a pretty big tank. There she goes, filling her up. Might run out of diesel before we get there, but yeah. Hell yeah. Riding over to the entrance. What a unit, man. This is an absolute. Oh, brother! Golly! <laughs> now she's ripping. Damn, son! Now we're cooking. How's it feel? What a rig. It's like a This thing's giant. <laughs> so the goal guys is we're trying to get on this strip right here. But we gotta make sure this thing can handle the bank. It's a lighter bank right here, so we're gonna get it straightened up on this. Little counterbalance effort here. Dude, this is crazy. This is... <laughs> I don't know if I want to drive it when it's on the bank. I've already driven a mill, it's off my bucket list. What does it say on the slope indicator? Not good. Not good? Right now we're right there. Yeah. The more you go up, the more <laughs> Feels fine. Problem is, that's all you have to go by. Yeah. So, uh, you get to that point and it's too late, it's too late. Yeah, right? Hey guys, we're driving up towards the damage zone. RG's taking his time watching the attitude indicator there. So, the other thing is, too. The machine's actually not level with the surface, which the drum has to be level with this, so. Just gotta drop it about another degree to make it right. But we could also dig in a little bit deeper with that side and then just kind of fix it. Old faithful, dude. 
Oh look, we didn't even need the hose. The sprinklers are getting us. You guys, while we wait for the cat guy to come to tell us if we can keep going or not, we're gonna just start bump milling stuff. What are you doing? Too wide through here? Yes. Cool. Cutting into the track. A lot of this part is really good. We're just gonna clean up the apron. Get under here, see what's wrong. Fill this in, seal it off with some fresh asphalt. These guys are running on this. Bad Chad and I are working on making the saw cuts for this big hole over here, the old sinkhole. All right, so we're setting out these two by fours. place up dude the bump mill does such a good job actually i mean the line it leaves is so clean we have an actual employee from cat here he's giving us the approval to go on the bank or not so the plan is guys they're actually going to mill basically in a flat direction and just do multiple passes with the big drum it's going to take multiple passes like this but it should uh 
keep us from rolling the cat over. Right here. I guess. So we're only making a mess for this pass. RG wanted to focus on the machine and not trying to guide the shoot, so dump trucks just sitting there. Big mess maker. Big mess maker. Coming along now we're here. We're gonna grab this gear real quick. Push the pile out of the way in the front of the boat. Yep. Alright, so since the conveyor can't really move all this asphalt, that's just Residual here, I'm gonna be picking it up, putting it in the dump truck. Then we'll be doing the top layer. We're gonna move this here pile out of the way for the mill and uh, keep moving. favorite part of uh, construction. This is the part where things start to just look so ugly. It's always every construction project is things have to get really ugly to look better. And we're in that stage where we're just destroying things and making a huge mess, but it's all for the better. You just gotta remember that no matter when you're uh, doing a small project or large, you gotta keep the right attitude. This time over the start finish line, you guys. Breaks my heart. We just put this new timing loop in. It's gonna cost us. <laughs> Here we go. Another day, another cut. Another pothole, another cut. All oh, right, into my fresh timing loop, dude. Unreal. We have to buy another ten dollars worth of wire. All right, Pete. There's probably about ten timing loops right here. This one was mine. Big Allen. Look at all the timing loops, dude. It's crazy. Now, this probably worries a lot of you, but we've already cut them all one time before when we cut the apron off to do the burnout pad. So these are all already cut wires, except for our new one that we just destroyed, but whatever. Ooh, that is steep. Oh my gosh. All right, yeah, see, so we're gonna take this out. Basically, right next to the skid steer over to here. We're taking, we're taking this out too. That's yeah, oh yeah. The yeah, coming out of the apron, you really drill this. This will all get fixed. Uh, we got a little bit more milling to do today. We're running low on diesel for the mill and our delivery of diesel doesn't come till tomorrow. So that's probably gonna wrap up this video. All right guys, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching, do it for today. We'll freaking see you later.